temperature effects on fluoride varnish. Um, we looked at two different factors. We looked at the bioavailable fluoride and the viscosity. So the reason why we did this project ha um, starts with a story. So one of my faculty mentor would go on a lot of um, service trips to Zambia, <coughs> Dominican Republic, Haiti, and he would take a suitcase full of fluoride varnish donated from many different types of um, companies, uh, dental supply companies. And then he would go there, he would set the patient up and have everything ready, and then they would open the varnish, and then it becomes too congealed to even place it on a patient's teeth. And so when he came back, we decided to do this research project to see how um, high storage temperatures would affect the fluoride varnish. Um, and so what we did, we took four different types of fluoride varnish brands, and we um, incubated them at four different temperatures, starting from the most ideal um, storage temperature set by the manufacturer, and then to um, the high temperature of um, storage temperature at Zambia. And so what we did, we um, took the varnishes, stored them at the four different temperatures for five days, and then at the end of that five day, we would um, I'll flow them at a 45 degree angle to measure their viscosity, and then we um, dissolved the varnish into a saliva-like solution and measured their bioavailable fluoride. And the results that we got is um, actually what we expected. With the increase in storage temperature, there was a decrease in bioavailable fluoride and increase in viscosity, basically becoming too thick. And if you look at this <coughs> red one right here, that's group B, that's actually the one ha that had the most stable viscosity and the most stable um, fluoride concentration as well. But the most interesting um, finding that we had, and maybe the more <coughs> clinically important finding we had, is that uh, group A, C, and D had packaging failures at high temperature. And so, uh, the all A, C, and D, if you look right here, you can see how it, the fluoride became so congealed that it, it looks like a taffy texture. So that was obviously can't apply it clinically. Um, and so in conclusion, um, if you were to go to um, areas where there's high storage temperatures and there's not adequate um, cooling system, um, we would recommend group B um, varnish, which is actually the one that's actually double packaged. And so we believe that the packaging has a great effect on um, the viscosity and the fluoride concentration. All right, thank you. Um, can you go into more detail about which, like, what did group B consist of? So it was, which type of fluoride was it? What was the temperature that you had it at? All that stuff like that. So group B, um, the, it's a, if you, it's this one right here. It's, a, it's like a flat type. If you open it up, there's um, a little brush to apply and then another small package that has the actual fluoride varnish. So there's two, um, layers of um, packaging, while all the other ones had just one layer. And we store the um, group B in all four temperatures. And then if you see like right here, especially the viscosity, it was really quite stable. And so this is the only one that we could actually take it out of the packaging and actually paint it on someone's teeth. Thank you. Thank you.